property developer turned pawnbroker James Constantino has been closing big money deals for the past six years. You've got £300,000 worth of jewellery here. Shit. Yeah. I can't believe how the time has flown. I started off in Weybridge with this idea of high-end pawnbroking. It's looking great, isn't it? I opened up another two shops. Cheers, James. Cheers. Got an ever-increasing workforce. It's going absolutely crazy. <laughs> By his side from the beginning has been James's right-hand woman, Jo. Stubborn little bugger. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. No, I'm not. And stalwart staff member, Lawrence. The most expensive vase went for 53 million. The thing about us is we only specialise in the high-ticket items. James isn't frightened of anything and we'll take on anything to make money. Oi, then come on. It's the start of a new week at the pawn shop's flagship store in Hatton Garden. Just for me to take a note, how many in total do you have? Designer bag expert Claudia's on a call to a potential new client. And they're all Chanel's, are they? They're all Chanel's. Yes. Lovely. Yes. We yes. love Chanel's. I don't have to find out where I've put them. Yeah, that's fine. I look forward to seeing you. Me too, Garbo. All right, then. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye. Bye, -bye. Oh, how cute. This lady, she broke her leg about six years ago and she can't get about. And she's uh, she's got a little Zimmer frame, she says, but it's a pretty one. <laughs> it's all nicely done up. She's got six Chanel bags. I really can't wait to go and see her. She sounds lovely on the phone. 80-year-old Garbo Garbo lives in London, Soho, and is quite the local character. I'm known as the Queen of Soho. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that funny? Extraordinary, unusual, colourful, living art, really. Lucky him, then. <laughs> Garbo is a retired elocution teacher and worked all over the world voice coaching drama students and transsexuals. I haven't always been 80, you know. I'm only just getting used to it. I've lived a very eventful life. I've had lovers, which I enjoyed very much. Now Garbo has just two companions, her 16-year-old pet terrier, Magenta... Is that nice? Andrew. Hello there. ..and partner, Andrew. I want to see what you're doing with the fish. Oh, show me. Well, there's a squid, fresh from Borough Market. Oh, I told you not to get that. No, he told me to get no, that. No, no. No, we've no, had the octopus. Andrew, no. <laughs> I actually married him once. We got married in, um, where did we get married? Oh, Miami. But it only lasted a little while. I divorced him quite quickly after that. But he never left. And when I look in the mirror, I think, not bad at all. <laughs> Looking quite good, Garbo, better than anyone out there. If everybody was dressed nicely or a bit of oomph, I wouldn't stand out. It's not my fault, it's their fault. Garbo's refined taste in fashion doesn't end with her clothes. I like the good things in life, but who doesn't, actually? Ooh, my lovely bags. I was in my studio in Soho, and I looked out of the window, and there was this lovely Chinese girl. She had this beautiful bag. And I went downstairs, and I said, excuse me, I love your bag. Oh, she said, it's Chanel. Ooh, I said. That's nice. And after that, when it used to be my birthday for quite a few years, I would buy a Chanel bag. I always say to myself, no more bags. But somehow you see a bag and you fall in love with it. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. But I don't want them anymore. I want the money instead. I need money to pay for a shower because I can hardly get my leg over the bath. If I've got a shower, I'll feel safe and nice. And because it's specialised, you know, for people like me, as it were, it's five or six thousand pounds for a shower, would you believe? But I've got to have it. It's life and death in a way. It's not just the bathroom refurb Garbo needs funds for. I don't think Magenta has long to live. Let Magenta have her water. You are lover. Oops, don't drown. I'll need some money to buy a new little animal. Oh, look, it's all spilled. Do you want a napkin? And also, I want Botox when I need it. Three very good reasons. I'm looking to raise at least eight to 9,000, because I know how expensive the new ones are. They're Chanel bags. 
goodness sake. All the staff at the pawn shop have favourite items they like to deal with. It's Perry Yusang bolt sign boots. Wow, that is absolutely amazing. For boss James, it's cars, and today he's received an inquiry about a Porsche. It's a beautiful early 964 911 turbo from the early 90s. It's in guards red. It looks absolutely stunning in the pictures. These early examples can get a quarter of a million quid. It's a lot of money. So we need to really get it down to us to have a look. We'll appraise it. And if this is a nice example, it could be worth a nice few quid. The Porsche exciting James belongs to 32-year-old supercar fanatic Sid from West Yorkshire. Lamborghini, that's on my to-do list. That will be a car that I will own one day. Because it looks outrageous, it sounds outrageous, and it just is outrageous. When I was a kid, I had a lot of models. Now, I'd like to buy the real thing uh, and see what it's like to experience driving that type of car. It's a good split to have the models here, but then have some real-life examples on the other side. Sid keeps both car collections at the manufacturing company he runs with his two older brothers, Ben and Dylan thinks about cars in his sleep. If I can't find him anywhere in the factory or in the office, I might find him polishing a nut and a bolt under a bonnet somewhere. Probably in total, I've actually had between 35, 40 cars and two motorbikes in 10 years. Now then, all right. Sid's seen another car he'd like to add to his list. It's a 1993 Virage Volante. I haven't owned an Aston Martin before. A Volante, in my eyes, is the one to have. But time isn't on Sid's side. Four years ago, aged 28, his life took a dramatic turn. I collapsed at home and then got stretched and rushed to Leeds Hospital. Ended up finding quite a big tumour behind my chest plate. Um, that turned out to be after a biopsy cancerous and uh, there was a bit of a rush on then after then to uh, get me into surgery to get it whipped out, really. But within two years, the cancer was back. Not only were it in one area, now it were in four different areas. He gave me a one in three chance of getting past the age of 35. That was when I was 31. I'm 32 now, so I'm not doing too bad. Sid's outlook towards the cancer, he can look quite flippant, but it's just a different perception of life and a different outlook. I always say to myself in the morning, if I die today, will I be upset that I didn't? do something that I wanted to do. And if my answer's yes, then, then I'll make it happen. Top of his agenda is buying the Aston Martin. And to do that, Sid wants to raise a loan of £35,000 against his Porsche. Right, well, as soon as you get into Ripley, yeah. give him a call. I'm having it taken down to James. Then James can view the car and inspect it, make sure it's everything that it should be. Uh, and then he's going to drive it around the test track just to make sure it is a true, true 964 Turbo. Cheers. Sid bought the sports car six months ago for £49,000. A bit apprehensive about him driving it, but if he breaks it, he can buy it. <laughs> so, no, no, it should be, it should be all right, German engineering, it should, uh, it should hold out. But will James think the Porsche is high spec enough to loan Sid the money he's after? Running a pawn shop for the asset rich can be a risky business. I don't know if it's genuine or not. As we deal with big ticket items, it's really important to know the assets are kosher before we loan money against it. We're basically like police dogs, sniffing out real items from the dodgy goods. At the end of the day, if we don't check out these items thoroughly, it could cost us an absolute fortune. James is hoping to track his latest inquiry through the history books. Do you know Ernest Shackleton, the explorer? And this is a relative of his who's got an undertaker's in London. And these are some of the old vehicles, that are beautiful old vintage cars. I love these sort of things. He's got Ernest Shackleton's old personal belongings. He's got his old pickaxe, ice pick. Oh. And more amazingly, the coffin that this funeral company made for Shackleton when they thought he was coming back to the UK to be buried, but in the end, he wasn't brought back. To own Shackleton's coffin, I mean, that's... It's quite something. Seventy-two-year-old James Shackleton is a retired funeral director from Shepherd's Bush, London. Most undertakers have a bit of a sense of humour. They do. You have to have that. You have to lighten the load. The business has been in his family since 1703. 
This is where I keep my coffins, all different sizes, six foot, six foot two, six foot four. The sign of a good undertaker is to tell a person's height at a glance. He closed the undertakers 10 years ago when he retired. These urns up here, we had them in a the funeral parlour and I brought them back over and I thought, why not? You know, there's no one in them. Not yet, anyway. <laughs> James's heritage doesn't end with the undertakers. Is that tooting one two one two? <laughs> James claims to have a personal connection with a famous historical figure. I'm very proud that my great uncle was Sir Ernest Henry Shackleton, the famous Antarctic explorer. Every schoolboy would know that his boat was crushed in the ice. He rowed 800 miles with three companions to a whaling station to get help. And he says he has items from Shackleton's expedition. This is a, a little sleigh made with bits of wood from the crushed boat. He also has a footstool and ice axe. I think this is the most exciting thing I have because he's gripped it with his own hands. He's got his DNA written all over it. It's very good for scratching your head as well, you know, scratching your head, doing earwax. Or any other places you got it, Nick, you know. <laughs> Sir Ernest Shackleton died of a heart attack in 1922 in South Georgia, and according to James, his family prepared for an elaborate funeral. It's solid oak. It would have been a very expensive coffin in its day, but he never used it. At the last moment, his wife Emily, Lady Shackleton, said, no, leave him, leave him there. He was never happy until he was travelling. Now James wants to sell the coffin and expedition memorabilia so he can restore his vintage vehicles. Next patient, nurse. <laughs> I'm trying to raise about 20 to 25,000 pounds. I'm a pensioner, I don't have that sort of money. <laughs> I, I have a lot of pride and a lot of love for these cars. It would be such a shame for something like this to just, excuse the pun, die and just rot away in a garage. But will his artefacts make James the money he needs? Yeah! Yeah! <laughs> Mid-morning in London's Diamond District, and Claudia's off to meet Queen of Soho, Garbo Garbo. I'm looking forward to seeing her bags, and I'm really looking forward to meeting her, actually. I think the bags are going to be definitely bags that we'll be interested in buying. Hello! Come in. Thank you. Yeah, second door on the left. Oh, hello. Wow, hello. Gosh, aren't you gorgeous? Well, I knew you were going to be colourful, but I didn't realise that this <laughs> colourful. <laughs> Sit down, Claudia. Thank you. Squeeze in here. Okay, you're beautiful. Young wow. and beautiful. That's what I'd like I'm to be. I'm absolutely speechless. <laughs> <laughs> I can't stop looking at you. Oh, uh, well, yes, I am something to look at. We know that. Would you like to look at the bags now? I'd love to. That's the one I told you is a limited edition. This is gorgeous. It's beautiful. When was the last time you used this one? Maybe 15 years really? ago. Really? Mm. Well, I forgot about that when it was Did at you? the top of the wardrobe. Yeah. I'd like to be able to forget about a Chanel handbag. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not sure if that one wasn't limited edition. That's I think it really, may have been, yes, actually. Yes, because, you know, red with mm. Chanel is quite rare. Quite rare. Yes. Try really? this one. But look at that. But again, to look, this one. <laughs> you know, I go to the Ivy quite a lot, and that would come Do with you? me, with my little purse and bits and oh, pieces. Lovely. Oh, there's the card in that one. Oh, that's good. Now, I've hardly used it. It looks 1920s, I thought. Yeah, it's lovely, I thought that was beautiful. So, um, all together, how much would you like to raise for...? Well, I'd like to raise enough for the show. Right. I don't know how much the dog is. <laughs> I want a good dog, if you know. Okay. And I know the Botox. I want the Botox for life, though. <laughs> I don't want <laughs> just Botox, one question but... of Botox. I want it till I'm dead. These are really gorgeous bags. You've well, got a lovely selection. I suppose, here. like you, I've got good taste. Yeah. I'm going to um, take them back with me, then, yes, if that's OK. Fine. They were very unique. Every single one of them was a different style. And some of them were sort of old, vintage, so definitely sellable. Not going to disappear now, No, are you? I won't. Into the wild. I won't. With the bags. <laughs> oh, gosh. There you go. Bye, Garbo. Bye bye. 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 At the pawn shop in Hatton Garden, there's an unusual delivery. It looks like a, a very old hearse going by the shape of the car, probably 1920s. Yeah. 
Maybe it's for Lawrence. Some of those overlending on pledges again. James, that hearst is out there. It's just parked outside. It's right outside the shop. I'm going to have a look. Have you seen it? Well, I've only poked through the window. I mean, I didn't really want to sort of have a look in case there's someone in there. Unbeknownst to his staff, boss James has asked retired undertaker James Shackleton to drop off his coffin so he can start doing some research. Oh, my God. Did somebody order a taxi? <laughs> <laughs> is this the... Uh, Shackleton's coffin? Could... It's just really oldie-worldy, isn't it? But it's a fantastic piece of kit. Joe, we're going to need a hand with this coffin. Are you all right? The coffin, I'm not that is. touching the coffin. Yeah, Joe, get the back end of the coffin. What are you doing with the coffin? We're bringing it in. What for? We're doing some research on it. Is yeah. the coffin worth something then? Well, it could yeah. potentially be worth quite a few quid, yeah. Oh my yeah. god. Yeah. Get the back end. What's this? Just this get that. This put it on your shoulder, that's what you do it. That's it. <laughs> you bloody put Don't. it on your shoulder. Yeah, you got it. I'll get the door. No, James, I haven't Come on, got don't it. Just be careful, yeah. Come. <laughs> Oh, my God! I can't believe you're letting me do this. Where's all the gentlemen gone these days? <laughs> That's it. Bring it in. Be careful. Don't knock any of the wallpaper or anything. Be careful. That's it, yeah. That's what happened to one of our last customers. We've had all sorts come through the door. The horse and armour, the motorbikes. James, can we get in this little alcove? It's perfect. It's a small coffin, isn't it? Well, he was a small man. <laughs> but a coffin? I mean, that's just creepy. The things we take in, honestly. The coffin may have freaked Joe out, but if it was made for Sir Ernie Shackleton, it could earn me a lot of money. Coffin in front of me. Jesus, look at that. At the Richmond branch, James has appointed a new staff member. It's a nice looking ring, but the price is based on the gold price of today. Delif has been a gemologist for 15 years. I hired Delif because she specialises in testing jewellery and metals. Today, she's dealing with a large amount of Chinese pieces brought in by a local client. I've got 61 items in total here. There's quite a lot of rings. Some of them have nice gemstones or diamonds in, and some of them are semi-precious. So the value will vary quite considerably. <laughs> The box of potential Asian treasure belongs to Richmond resident, 40-year-old Alice. I'm a lady of leisure. What do I do in my time? I go to the gym a lot. And I eat a lot as well. Roasted pepper? This one? Yeah, of course. Fantastic. Yeah. These are amazing. They make all them pecan drops. This one? Yeah. My husband and I go out a lot. We've got sort of a bucket list where we write down which Michelin star restaurant have we been to or not been to. So it was our six year um, anniversary. I did try to book some of the other Michelin star restaurants and they were already full. Were they? Yeah. What do my friends think of me? Uh, they think I'm very fortunate to be able to have the opportunity not to work. Cheers. Happy Monday, I think. Alice hasn't always been a lady of leisure. I used to work at um, a Hilton hotel doing conference and events. She gave up her job to help her father care for her elderly mother who has dementia. It's very draining on my dad and also for me. You've got to have professional help. They were both in their 80s and it was really difficult. So in the end, we actually had to take her to a care home. But the care home here is just so expensive. It's about £7,000 a month. We couldn't afford that. Alice's dad decided to take her mother back to their birthplace of Taiwan, where they could afford the help they needed. It was sad for me because I used to spend my whole time with my mum and dad. Mummy, it's 7 o'clock now. Where's your bag? I'm going to go. I love you. When her mum and dad left, they asked Alice to take care of their financial affairs. My mum loved buying houses. She had four properties in the UK. She loved buying houses. My mum loved buying houses. She had four properties in the UK. Each of those four properties we actually had to clear out. It was then she discovered the jewellery. It was a big shock, actually, to realise how much my mother had collected. It would be great to know if any of the jewellery is of value. Alice's parents want her to sell the collection and they're hoping for at least £2,000. Now that I'm not working, the money would be really useful for my airfare to go back home to Taiwan. I go back home to see my parents every two to three months, so that would be great if I can get some money out of the um, artefacts. But did Alice's mother leave a treasure trove? In well-heeled Surrey, James and Joe have been catching up on business at the Weybridge shop. Right, what are you up to? I'm just doing quite a few emails. 
Um, and then I've got to look at this rotor. Look, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to the toilet, and when I come back, it'd be nice if you could stop putting on your coat and we could go out, because I need to get out for a couple of hours. I've got to go and look at a car. Oh, I can come? Yeah, you can come, yeah. <laughs> get some air in your lungs, you know what I mean? Oh, thanks. Oh, my God, I didn't expect that. Well, Aren't come then. Nice I'll give you today? two minutes to do your bits and pieces. Well, did you have a full English or something this morning? Come on. James and Joe are heading to an airfield to put car fanatic Sid's Porsche through its paces. Oh, my God, what a great day to be allowed out. <laughs> Great to be allowed. Sound like a nutter in an that? asylum. Have I got to go in it? Well, we'll have a little look. We might have a poodle up the road in it just to make sure it goes through all the gear gears properly. And well, uh, you're not going to drive it really fast, are you? This is silly. Don't be ridiculous. I had absolutely no idea that I was testing a car on a test track. Let's get in it and take it out, shall we? Yeah. Yeah, I've got the keys. All right. Right, are you ready? Oh, don't shit the life out of me, please. When James got in and started revving the engine, I was slightly worried. He does like to go fast. I want to live a lot longer than this. I want to be around to see him and have kids. Be around to see your daughter have kids? Yeah. Ready? I'm ready, but yeah. James... Well, we're only poodling up the road, don't worry poodle, about that. You're poodle, cos you know I'm not the racy type. <laughs> Oh, my God, James. <laughs> James! Oh, God. Oh, God! Oh, my God, James! I don't like it! <laughs> God, it does some. Jesus! James! Oh. James, I don't like it on the band! Oh, my God! <laughs> what speed are you at? I don't know. What does 160 mean? You've been sleeping rough for six months. I feel months. like I've been dragged through a hedge backwards. <laughs> <All right. laughs> no. Oh, my God. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. Well, I'd better give this fella a call. I'm sure he's feeling very anxious. Not as anxious as me. To expand his supercar collection with an Aston Martin, Sid wants a loan of £35,000 against his Porsche. Hello. Sid. Hi, Jim. You all right? How are you doing, mate? You, you all right? Yeah, very well, thanks. Good. Good. Well, I've just given your car a little test drive. All right, is it still in one piece? <laughs> yeah, it's just, yeah, it's still in one piece, you'll be glad to know. Yes. Um, well, it drives quite nice, but look, as you know, the prices of these, um, these early turbos all over the place. So yeah. what I'd like to do is go back to the office, yeah. do a little bit more work on it, and then give you a call uh, later, is it? Is that OK? Yeah, that's fine, yeah, no problem. All right, lovely. Cheers, Sid. All right, James, thanks very much. Cheers, mate. Cheers, bye. bye. Will James's research mean Sid's loan gets the green light? Setting up a pawn shop for the asset rich... Hello, madam, how are you? ..often means unique and historic pieces come through the doors. So it's very, very old. And these look like old cuts as well. The shop's latest standout item is a coffin supposedly made for Sir Ernest Shackleton. See you later. Its owner, James Shackleton, says he's a relative of the Great Explorer and has other items Boss James is interested in seeing. Not only has he got the coffin, he's got some artefacts belonging to um, Ernest Isaacs, uh, a sled, apparently some of them from his expedition, so some amazing items to go and have a look at. Adam, you all right? Good to see you, James. James has asked along antiques expert Adam. I wanted Adam's opinion on the Shackleton pieces and to find out what documentation we needed to accompany those items. Yeah, well, make yourself at home. Oh, fantastic. Got a little Aladdin's cave in here, isn't it? It is, like the old curiosity shop. These items that you've got are directly linked. You've, you can kind of yeah, back I've them got, up with... I've got a photograph. Oh, photographs of him holding the items. Yes. Fantastic. Yeah. Wonderful. That's what we oh, I can't wait to see them. Yeah. Brilliant. <laughs> OK, well, let's have a look. 
What about uh, his ice pick? I'll just go and get it. Yeah, please do, yeah. It's, it's on the round here somewhere. I'm a bit scared. I <laughs> know, yeah. It's a bit frightening in here, isn't it? Going round James's house was a little bit eerie. I was getting a little bit freaked out about it. There we are, take your pick. Wow. <laughs> Thank yeah, you very that's much. His, that's his original ice pick. So, which expedition was this one on? I believe he bought that in 1902, when he went up with Scott. Yeah. And have you got anything to back that up? The photographs. You've got um, one of him holding them. Um, in the book, there is, a, Let's have a look with the a book, few James. photographs in. Let me just have a look. Let's have a look at the book, James. It's an amazing thing, isn't it? Well, yeah, it's got all the signs of age that you'd expect. It's really heavily worn. That's what you want to see as well. But the provenance is key with something like this. Yeah, yeah. OK. Yeah. So this is potentially the Scott it Livia. Might be, uh, the next page along. They're leaning on something, but I can't quite see what it is. Just bear with me half a moment. Would that be. I don't know, but you can't see it as such properly yeah. without a magnifying glass. I think that's going to just make it go all dotty, is it? Yeah, I can't actually see. Looking through the books, there was supposed to be proof of him holding the ice pick, but I couldn't see a bloody thing. So what's this? Uh, this was made by the ship's carpenter on the Shackleton ship. It was made from the uh, when the boat was crushed in the ice, the, oh. the debris from the... Oh, so the salvage material. Any photos of him with this? I don't think so, no, I don't. Right. Show you the next item, and uh, that was on the bottom of the rowing boat. One thing that does concern me a little bit, would they bring that home? Retired funeral director James wants £25,000 to do up his collection of vintage cars. So, James, I think really for us, I think you need some, some photographs, some documents, maybe. If you yeah. could search your, uh, anything you have at home. Potentially very valuable, but without all I that, hope so, yeah. we've, we've, we're going to be struggling. Well, I'll try my best, yeah. It's been a pleasure seeing you today, James, and thanks mm -hmm. for your time. Well, thank you. Right. Fantastic. Thank you. Thanks. Right. Cheers. I'm always an optimist, so for me, I'm hopeful that James will come up with uh, enough provenance to take them to the marketplace and, and hopefully we can sell them. At the moment, it hangs in the balance. At headquarters, Claudia's appraising Soho Queen Garbo's vintage handbags. The one I feel a bit sceptical about is this one here. Unfortunately, the leather is quite scuffed and, and quite scratched. That will lower the price quite dramatically, actually. And also this one here, there's uh, biro marks inside as well, and biro doesn't come out. With doubts about two of the bag's condition, will Claudia be able to offer Garbo the £8,000 she's after? At the Richmond branch to come up with the valuation, Delith is testing some of the 61 pieces brought in by Alice. I need to file enough off the edge to go through any potential plating and I need to make sure that if there is any plating, I'm actually testing the metal underneath. So what I'm looking for is the colour that the acid has gone. It goes a different colour according to the different metals. Brilliant, look at this. You can see how that's fizzing green. So that's not gold. It's um, a base metal like brass. So unfortunately, this has no value. A lot of jewellery here that will only go for the, the scrap value of the metal, but because there's quite a lot of it, then it will actually add up to a reasonable amount of money for her. This is quite a nice diamond ring. They are just under half a carat each, so that's a lot of diamond. This one ring will make it the whole parcel worthwhile. As well as precious stones, Alice has also given Delith a collection of what she thinks is jade. I would like a second opinion on the value of some of these items. Although I was confident that they, they were all jade, I wasn't sure of its value in today's market. To get a definitive price for the jade, James is taking the items to jewellery expert Ian. Delif has done a lot of research, but it's always nice to have a second eye, have a look, and uh, make sure that we're doing the right thing if we make put an offer forward. Ian, hi. Hello. How you doing? Yeah. yeah good. You all right? Yes. Good to see you. You're very sparkly today. Oh, I did it all because I thought mm. maybe you'll visit me. Well, you know, <laughs> we've all got to live in hope. And we've got a client. She's brought in some jade pieces. Wow, that's a big parcel. <laughs> well, thank you very much. But what about this? <laughs> I thought you might want to... Have a little look for me, if you could. We just want to know if they're of any interest or if they're of any value, really. They're of interest. 
but not of great value. All oh, right. <laughs> Initially, I was under the impression that jade was very collectible. It is collectible. It is desirable, but it has okay. to be antique. You see by the metalwork that it's not antique. Mm. So basically, there's no great age to these pieces, yeah. although they have been sort of carved generally well, you think? Yeah. They're lovely, beautifully carved, you know, very collectible, but unfortunately modern and of not great value. Mm. Cheers, Ian. It's a big packet. It's difficult to get in. Difficult to handle, unless you're experienced, obviously. <laughs> Good yeah. to see you again. Take it easy. Cheers. Yes. Lovely. Thank Thanks you. for your help, Ian. And we'll speak soon. Good luck with the chat. Cheers. Thank Good you. Luck. Alice wants a minimum of £2,000 for her mother's 61-piece collection, but will the jade jinx the pack? In London, Soho, retired voice coach Garbo's been waiting to hear from Claudia about her six designer bags. There's no problem with the bags, they're perfect. I'm not desperate for cash, I've never been desperate. I'm not a desperate person. I want the money. Garbo's looking for £8,000 to buy a shower, Botox, and, for when the time comes, a replacement dog. You're sleeping, aren't you, darling? Mummy wants to trim your hair tonight, make you look a pretty girl. Yes, that's right. You ignore me all the time, you do. But still, you're breathing. That's good. Bag expert Claudia is ready to give Garbo some news. Hi, Andrew. Good afternoon. How are you? Thank you. Oh, hello, Claudia. Hello, Garbo. How Come are on you? In. Watch little Mudge. Don't step on the I will. Gentle, will I will. You? <laughs> I won't. But your beautiful bag. So what's the damage? So I suppose you want to know about your bag. I'd bags. like to know, yes. yes. OK. I think we will be able to make you an offer on all of the bags. Yes. The, um, oh, that's nice. So let's get um, to okay, the... OK, let's get to the nitty-gritty. Let's get to the nitty-gritty. <laughs> so I think overall we can offer you... Spill it out. <laughs> <laughs> Claudia, spill it out. I think we can offer you uh, 5,250 no. Never. Them. Oh, really? Oh, no. Is Never, ever. Low? Yeah. I'd rather use them till they're really? worn. Yeah, no, no, I wouldn't. I think that's too cheap. I wouldn't do that. OK. I, really... I was slightly disappointed that she said no. I think the offer we made was, you know, the sort of max that we could possibly make, given the current condition. Shall we say goodbye now? Shall we? <laughs> Botox will certainly have to wait. It's the shower that's the thing. And hopefully Magenta won't die yet. She could go on another couple of years, couldn't she? In Hatton Garden... Thank you very much for our help. Thank you. Bye. James has been waiting for provenance for the items retired funeral director James Shackleton says belong to his ancestor, Ernest Shackleton. What's happening with that stuff, then? This ain't looking too clever at the minute. There's no pictures, no archive photographs, no documentation. All we've got is a load of old stuff. I mean, this Union Jack that apparently went on one of the expeditions, I mean, it's just a very old Union Jack. Yeah. And there's millions of these. Yeah. I was looking at these screws in the coffin, and they're like Phillips screw heads. Oh. I looked at the coffin closely, and it was being held together with Phillips screws. I don't think they were invented back then. I've got older screws on my Range Rover. Well, you turn into a little Columbo, haven't you? Yeah. It's a shame, because there is a possibility that some of it might be right, but some of it definitely doesn't look right. Without any provenance, I really only had two options. One, to take a punt on the whole package, or two, to leave it all alone. I seriously think there's a use for this. What about, like, a little sin bin for staff that haven't been performing well or behaving well? They have to go in there for half hour and we screw the lid shut. In Richmond, Delith is ready to make an offer to Lady of Leisure Alice for her mother's 61-piece jewellery collection. I think Alice should be relatively pleased with the price I'm going to offer her. I hope so. <laughs> I really hope so, yeah. Yeah, I'm feeling a little bit nervous, a bit... Uh, didn't sleep so well last night, kind of like going to, going to school to find out what your results are. Hi, how are you? Good, thank you. So I've gone through everything. Did you have a figure in mind of what you were hoping for? I was sort of talking to my husband and we are sort of saying you'd like to get something sort of over 2,000, if possible, so that would be great. OK. Well, I've tested everything. This is everything that we could buy from you. OK. And the total 
that we've come up with is £5,600. Okay. That's more than I thought. Um, oh, that's good. If it's I can give you a call back later, yes, perfect. No all. Brilliant. Right. I really appreciate everything. You're Thank welcome. you so much. OK, bye. 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 Just check with my husband when I go home and um, go from there. I think an offer of 5,600 when you're only expecting two is very generous and she should be very, very pleased with that. Will Alice accept the offer or has Delith's appraisal of the vast collection been all in vain? At head office, James has been doing some final checks on Sid's 1991 Porsche. Ed, is Leon there, please? It's James Constantino. I'll need a second opinion on the car. Basically, if fellas presented me with a 911, I've had the storage facility have a proper look at it, and there's a few concerns with it. They look like there's a couple of welds in places they shouldn't be. Thanks, mate. I'll try and get down to you within an hour, if that's all right. Right, the car's being taken down to Porsche. They're going to look at it, inspect, inspect it, make sure everything's tickety-boo and then we can go forward with this loan. I want to help uh, Sid. He sounds like a lovely fellow. I'm sure he doesn't know there's anything wrong with his car. And at this stage, I don't even know if there is. I've got a little bit of a bad feeling. I don't know why, but I've just got a little sneaky little niggler, you know, just sort of tweaking away in the back of my head. But this car isn't quite what it's meant to be. In Hatton Garden, everyone at the pawn shop is hard at work. Maybe I should do that. Well, almost everyone. Yeah, you don't either. But I'm having this because um, I really like um, red bush tea. You know that Roy Bush, that South African naturally decaffeinated tea plant. <laughs> no, I haven't got the energy. I'm fighting a cold. Arriving outside the shop is retired undertaker James. I feel a bit anxious and uh, like a, a new bride going to a wedding. Well, in this case, you know, funeral. <laughs> well, if not, it will be my bloody funeral. James wants £25,000 to restore his vintage vehicles by selling items that he says were owned by explorer Ernest Shackleton. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Hi, James. All right? All right. Come to see James. Yes, I have, yeah. Oh, if he's in. Come through. Hi, James. Hi, you all right? Yeah. Hello. How are you? How are you? Nice to see you. Hey, you mate. Grab a seat. Oh. James, thanks for coming in. And um, you gave us some great items, there's no doubt about it. Yeah. Um, obviously, you've got the name Shackleton and the link there, but uh, for us, really, yeah. once we take these items yeah. away from you and they're no longer in your possession, yeah. what we have to prove to an end collector is provenance. Yeah. As such, yeah. I'm really disappointed to tell you yeah. that we're not able to assist you on this occasion with, this, oh, well. with the sale. Never mind, it's just one of those things. It was a gamble, you know. It was a gamble, yeah. It was, um, I, I thought that uh, the family name would have been suffice, but uh, yeah. never mind. Yeah, it's a shame it doesn't really work like that. The, this could have been worth like five, 10, 15 grand, had it been, had it had a picture of uh, yeah. Ernest with it in his mm. hands on mm. an expedition, mm. it would have been a really collectible thing. Wow. Oh, wow. What are you going to do with the pieces? Where do you go from here? Bonfire. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no, no. I'm sorry no, to disappoint no. you, mm. but look, it's been a real pleasure to meet you and to look at these uh, these curios and bits and pieces you brought to me. Well, thank you for taking the time to. Uh, no problem, James. Um, thank you for the time. Mate. Well, thank you again. Thank no you. No problem. <laughs> I think he realised basically that without Providence it was going to be a tough gig and it certainly was. I'm just disappointed that I didn't raise monies to uh, to do the vehicles up because they, they do need a bit of TLC. Fingers crossed I still hope to sell them. <laughs> you never know, do you? week since gemologist Delith offered Alice £5,600 for her mother's 61-piece jewellery collection. It turned out to be way more than she wanted, so I was quite surprised she didn't just close the deal there. Obviously, she's under no obligation whatsoever, um, despite the fact that I have put quite a lot of work into this. That's just part of the, the game. 
After a discussion with her other half, Alice is back at Richmond with a decision on the offer. Hi. Hi, Alice, how are you? Good, thank you. So I've spoken to my husband um, and there's a few items that uh, my husband wanted to keep. So we decided to um, keep two of the items, the gold coin, and um, there was also a ring, which was more for sentimental reason that we also wanted to keep aside. So we said 5,600 originally. Right. Comes to 4,975. Perfect. OK. Brilliant. Thank you. Quite excited about the, um, the valuation of uh, my parents' jewellery. I was hoping not to have anything less than 2,000, so super happy. Brilliant. Thank okay. you so much. Have a lovely day. You too. Thanks, right. Alice. Bye. Bye. I'm actually going to book my flights today to go back home to see my parents. Maybe even upgrade to business class. At Hatton Garden... This is all wrong. Sorry. James has received a second opinion on Sid's Porsche. I appreciate that. Cheers. Bye. 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 Well, that's the experts, you know, they've had a look at it. And what they can confirm is it's had welding underneath, which isn't normal. Uh, I'm going to have to give uh, Sid a call and um, let him know what I found out. Not going to be happy about this. I'm not happy about it. Good afternoon, NPM. Sid, hi, it's James. Hey, uh, hey James, you all right? Good. Right. Yeah. yeah, good, thanks. Sid. As you know, we've looked at the car. Yeah. Um, the car drove like a dream. I couldn't fault it. To be honest with you. Yeah. We uh, have consulted our experts and gone back to the Porsche people. Yeah. And it's not good news, I'm afraid. That car has, has had some work done to it. And as a result of that work, um, we're not going to be able to help you. We haven't done a full survey on it. Needed to ascertain is had that car been messed around with uh, to a level that we wouldn't be able to entertain it, and the answer to that is yes, it has been messed around with. Right. Really sorry, I couldn't help you. Okay, okay. Cheers, Sid. All sorry right, for cheers, that. Thanks. Bye. Cheers, bye. Well, that's made it interesting. Although the engineer had found out there had been work done on the car, it was by no means conclusive. Without proper documentation outlining the works that had been carried out, we were not prepared to lend the money. Yeah, like I say, I'll ring and discuss it with the person I buy it off. I was speaking to him this morning, so we'll see how that goes. It's nearing the end of a busy week at the London store. All oh, right, OK. And a phone call from a private buyer's put the Garbo designer bag deal back on the table. Oh, and the burgundy one as well? Oh, well, that's good. OK. And you're happy with those prices, yeah? All right. Cool. All right, thanks. Bye. When I got the phone call, I was really excited and really happy about it. It now meant that I could go back to Garbo and make her a higher offer. Is that Garbo? Yes, hello. hello. Claudia. Yes, how are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I've been fine, thank you. Everything's been great. So what's news, Claudia? Oh, well... A couple of the bags have actually had more interest than what I thought. And we'll be able to make you uh, a slightly higher offer, actually. That sounds good. How much higher? Well, I was thinking if I would make you an offer... Uh, for um, seven thousand pounds for all of the bags. Oh, Claudia, that's lovely. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, I'm brilliant. Happy with that, Claudia. Oh, that sounds really. Are you happy? No. Yes, oh, I'm good. very happy. Oh, good. I didn't want to let them go, and you know, I thought you were so lovely as well. Yes, I am. <laughs> it would be nice if ever you're up this way. You know, we could have coffee. You probably don't want to bother. That would be lovely, Garbo. I'd love to. I'll all definitely right. come and see you one day and we'll go and have a coffee. It. I would love it. It. Brilliant. All right, all then. Right, then. I'll okay. okay. Bye. Bye. 
Oh, I'm so pleased. That went really, really well. She's thrilled to bits. She sounded really, really happy, which is the main thing, really. I love it. Andrew? Hello. Guess what? What's that? 7,000... Great. We can go out to dinner now. Lovely, yeah, we can. We'll go to the Ivy.